Hello everyone. So in today's video, I want to talk about the ego. I want to talk about what it is and some considerations about it. And I also want to discuss the idea of why we don't want to live entirely from the ego and how we can do that. So first of all, I want to talk about a common misperception or misconception about the ego. A lot of people think that only certain people have an ego. They think that people that are, are narcissistic or have hugely inflated ideas of themselves are the only people that have an ego. But that is actually not the case. In fact, every single person has an ego. Basically, you can think of it, and I heard it explained this way and it made a lot of sense to me. You can think of it like a software program that comes with the body. So whenever we come to this planet, when we're born into a body, we basically are thrown into a situation that uh, makes it look like or seem like we are separate from every other person and everything around us. And so uh, the ego sort of operates from that perspective. So then the ego is a useful tool to help us to navigate the world around us, the world of objects, the world of people. Uh, it allows us to make generalizations about things, to make plans. Uh, it allows us to solve problems. And it's our sort of interface, as it were, uh, with everything else that we're sort of experiencing in our world. So we experience the ego as a running commentary that's going through our mind during our regular waking hours. We can think of it as our conscious mind. And a lot of the thoughts that we experience, apart from uh, other things that we may think about, revolve around the concept of I, uh, our self-concept. So our self-concept is very wrapped into the way that we think about the world and how we situate ourselves in relation to other people, uh, society at large, our space in society or our place in society as well. Something that is interesting about the ego is that it has no reality outside of its content. And so even though we may talk about it as though it's an entity with its own sort of personality or it has its own sort of agenda, the ego really does not exist outside of the thoughts that constitute it. And so when there is thought, there is ego, but when there is no thought, the ego disappears and it doesn't actually have any substance. So I want to talk now about why we don't want to live entirely from our egos. Well, first of all, the ego is only a small, very minuscule fragment of the totality of who we are as beings. Our psyche is actually made up of the ego, which is kind of like the central um, conscious part of our, of our minds. But most of our minds, most of our psyches are actually uh, unconscious to the waking mind. And um, a very huge part of who we are is made up of other parts that Jung describes as the personal unconscious and even much greater than the personal unconscious is the collective unconscious. But I'm not going to talk about uh, the unconscious in this video. This video is just focusing on the conscious content of our minds that we call the ego. Now, because of the fact that our conscious minds or our egos, our thought processes, uh, that which we are aware of only constitutes a very small fragment of the totality of ourselves, of our psyches, uh, if we were to identify too fully with our egos, we would become fully unaware of the fact that our behavior patterns and our triggers are actually informed by the unconscious content of our psyches. And so we may be acting in certain ways in the world that we think we are choosing, but really and truly, uh, it's being chosen for us based upon unconscious content that if we are not aware of it, we will be stuck in those behavior patterns, in those triggers, and in those ways of being that may be limiting our lives. Now, the other reason why we don't want to live entirely from our egos is because of the fact that as a survival mechanism, the ego is interested in solving problems. But what happens is that when it runs out of problems to solve, it may actually turn inward onto the person and make problems where they don't exist, where it becomes overly critical of the person uh, to the point where it can lead to low self-esteem and depression. 
So because of the fact that the ego is interested in our safety and our survival, it has a very vested interest in keeping us in safe and predictable outcomes. And so that could be a problem if we are interested in personal growth. If we are trying to do something that is different from what we've done in our lives for a very long time, that involves some level of, uh, of uncertainty or discomfort, the ego stands as a sentinel to basically stop us from taking those chances and those risks. And so if we are so identified with our egos, we may just listen to that voice and keep ourselves in that safe and predictable place where there is no growth and it's just leading us into more and more stagnation. The other reason why we don't want to become too heavily identified with ego is that we will fall into the same trap as the majority of people upon our planet that basically are not aware of the fact that they have an ego and that they are actually thinking thoughts and that those thoughts are actually subjective based upon their own personal experiences. Most people just assume that their interpretation of reality is true and objective and basically they assume that everyone else either thinks the way they do or should think the way they do and if not, they are considered uh, crazy or wrong. And so it's okay to have a subjective viewpoint on reality, but it's important for us to understand and know that it is subjective and uh, not basically look at everyone else as being wrong just because they don't hold the same viewpoints as we do. So you might ask, well, what do we do with the ego? If the ego can lead to depression, if it, can, if it gives us a distorted view of reality, if it keeps us in our comfort zones and keeps us from uh, personal growth and all of these things, then should we try to get rid of our ego? Should we not try to kill our ego off in some sort of way? So a lot of people in the spiritual community, in realizing the limitations of ego, in realizing that the ego can lead to suffering, have a strong desire to get rid of the ego or to kill the ego. But this is not the right approach because as long as we're in the body, we're going to have an ego. Thoughts are still going to surface. The idea is that we don't try to get rid of or kill the ego because it's not possible to do that. The idea is that we learn to transcend the ego and there is a huge difference. In transcending, we're basically putting ourselves in a place where we are able to just observe. And in observing, we're not getting rid of thoughts, but we're actually just seeing them for what they are. We are able to choose certain thoughts to identify or to hook on to certain thoughts. And we are able to also dismiss certain thoughts as unuseful, as destructive. And so when we sit in meditation, because we know that meditation is a way where we can transcend ego, it's very important that we don't get frustrated when we are unable to stop from thinking altogether. A lot of people fall into that trap where they feel like uh, they can't meditate because they are still thinking thoughts. The important thing is that we don't start beating ourselves up about that because ironically, the point of view from which we beat ourselves up and we become frustrated is the point of view of the ego. So the ego is actually extending its influence while at the same time beating itself up that it can't get rid of itself. So the ego makes a useful servant, but a terrible master as the saying goes. And so we don't want to get rid of our egos, just like we don't want to get rid of our servant. We want thoughts to serve us, but we don't want them to overpower us in the sense that they master us and make us into the servant. We want to be the ones in the driver's seat of our lives. And how we do that is by cultivating the practice of meditation and mindfulness so that we can find those gaps between the thoughts from which we can observe the thoughts as they rise up into our awareness. And just as much as they rise into our awareness, just as much as they appear in our awareness, if we just continue to observe them without becoming clingy and attached to them, they will also dissipate just as fast as they come up. And so we realize that as thoughts arise, they don't really come from an act of our volition. They basically arise in our field of consciousness. So the ones that arise in our consciousness that are useful, we can use those thoughts, but we can also realize that certain thoughts are not necessarily true. They may be coming from a very critical voice 
a voice that may uh, be informed by other people that have influenced us by their own uh, critical inner critics and so on over time. So we don't have to listen to those thoughts that break us down and make us feel like we are diminished as human beings. So that's it for today, friends. If you got any value from the video, please hit the like button. Also, uh, if you are interested in being informed when I come out with more videos, by all means, subscribe to the channel and feel free to share the videos with anybody else that you feel will benefit. Have yourselves an amazing day. I'll see you in the next video.